Hey, I'm Guy. I'm John. It's our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it and give this video a like. Also, our podcast below in the description. Check that out. Also, this video is brought to you by WineAccess.com slash ham, John. Yes, it is. WineAccess.com slash ham. Send a gift today, 20% off. Nice bottles, cheaper bottles. You can check and view any type of bottles you want on WineAccess.com slash ham. Your satisfaction is absolutely guaranteed. The toughest part. The toughest part of the 49ers schedule. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it, you mentioned the Tennessee game. The stretch was, last year was way harder than anything they have this year. Remember that? It was like Seattle, LA, Green Bay. It, it, they, they don't have anything like that because they have easy games or just the winnable opponents. games thrown in between a lot of opponents. I, you agree? I, like, remember last year there was that brutal, like, five game stretch? And, and then obviously, once Jimmy got hurt, it was a disaster. But they don't, I don't see a stretch where they have four straight games against four straight playoff teams. Um, uh, well, okay, so let's talk about the timing. The You mentioned earlier this, the Tennessee Thursday night game, Week 16. That comes three weeks after your Sunday night Seattle game. I mean, if if Sunday nights or Thursday nights make you need to play catch-up a little bit, maybe that's less than ideal. But, you know, I for me, I go back to this, um, to this middle part. Is Aaron Rodgers on the Packers? Because if he is, they're really good. Week three is tough. Seattle's yeah. then tough week four. At Arizona, we know is difficult for them. By week, Indy, we, Carson Wentz beat them with a worse team last year. Right now, the Niners were – I mean, that, that was a Mullins game, right? Um, Eagles, Niners. But yeah. but the Colts are good at Chicago. Yeah, October 31, I mean, it could be colder, but it could be warmer. October 31st against the Bears. Cardinals again. Rams again. So that to me, in some ways, I think you referenced week three to week 10 as being the best stretch, like in terms of entertainment. That's pretty tough, though, too. Well, then you could say like their toughest three game stretch. If if Rogers stays, I mean, Green Bay, Seattle, Arizona, three straight games. I mean, Green Bay was up until Brady beat them. I think most people are picking them to win the Super Bowl last year. So if he stays, the Green Bay's loaded. They're much better than the team the Niners kicked their ass two years ago. Seattle, I mean, every time they play, they could play in Antarctica or Alaska or China, and that game's hard, right? So that Green Bay-Seattle back-to-back, that, that's just – you just look at all the teams the Niners play, all 17 games, that's as tough of a back-to-back game they have all season. Assuming Rodgers stays, right? Rodgers-Seattle. Seattle won the division last year. So that's just boom-boom. And then Arizona – we just know they play the Niners really well. Even the Super Bowl year when they swept them, both those two games were tight, right? Tight. That's a, that's just a tough three-game stretch. Looking back, it's why you win those first two games. If somehow you're able to go two and one in those, you're all of a sudden four and one, you've banked some pretty good wins, right? You've either beat Arizona, Seattle, or Green Bay. Two of those three games, you're in pretty good shape going into the bye. And also, I think there's a little stretch here where – Week 10 to 13, where the Rams Monday Night Football, that's a big boy game. I mean, that's that's probably one of the better, if we just look at the Monday Night schedule, one of the better games on the, on the docket. And Niners-Rams has been good since Shanahan's first year when the Niners were bad. Then you go short week to Urban and, and Trevor. Now, that's the Niners, I would imagine, if we just, they're a seven-point favorite in that game. But still, that's a long travel. That's a 10 a.m. kickoff. Then you come back Minnesota, who I believe is going to be a competitive playoff level team this year, and then Seattle. Like that's just the Rams, just long travel Jacksonville, mini Seattle. Like that's that's not you're not sleepwalking there. No, right? right. There there are not huge stretches. Like, do you agree, Minnesota? I bet most Niner fans look at the schedule, just win. That game's probably a little harder than I think people are just assuming. Last year's stretch, as it turned out, Miami was good. Last year's stretch was week five. Miami, Chargers, Patriots, Seahawks, Packers, Saints. That was their stretch that you were talking about earlier. And they came out of that, they hit the bye, and then they played the Rams and the Bills. Got ugly. So they don't have that here. You're right. The the tough stretches are like mini stretches. Green Bay, Seattle, Arizona. Indy, Chicago, Arizona, the Rams. Minnesota, Seattle. Right? Right. The fact that Tennessee's on a Thursday night, week eight, week sixteen. Are you viewing Minnesota as a playoff team? Yes. 
like, like I haven't one of done those. the uh, let's see where do they fit in are they did they how many wins but I just view them as a playoff team like an eight to ten win type team right what give me a reason not to I know I'm with you why would nice I see it so the, the one thing that's got to be nice you just kind of look down every time you look at the schedule if you're Kyle and you just see like a Jacksonville a Cincy a Houston like it just makes you breathe a little deeper I didn't feel like that was really last year no no, after the giant, oh, after the New York stretch, remember it was. Remember we talked about those two New York games. Like you, the way we'll kind of talk about Detroit, Philly, you have to win against the Jets and the Giants last year, and that's why the Arizona game kind of hurt. Because it's like, well, all right, you're gonna have to win at Arizona at the end of the year, which they did. Ultimately, they did, but we knew it was going into that stretch. You know, and at the time, we probably thought we didn't. We don't include Philly in that whole discussion last year's philadelphia game with miami la like all those other teams i mentioned a second ago but they beat them so philly beat the niners yeah yeah fulgham down the sideline mullins through two of the worst picks we've ever seen i listen it sounds crazy and, and most you know level-headed people will say you can't say this i feel pretty confident saying this like you have to win and we talked about this earlier today if you want to check out the youtube channel uh, we put a video up like you got it. You just have Detroit. You ha- that's a must win game. Like the Niners cannot like you got to win that game. Like you just new coach Jared Goff. Like that's a game that you just win as the Niners. Now, like we said, week one games. I this, you I think you mentioned this. It's true. They're the already just as of right now. And obviously injuries with quarterbacks and trading people. It shit changes. But they have the biggest point spread in week one. Like is it, and is I don't seven care. and a half right now. Yeah, like if you win that game, twenty to fourteen. Like I, I don't need style points week one. Just win the game. But you got to win that game. You can't lose to the Detroit Lions, Jared Goff, and and Dan Campbell. Like th- that would be. You talk about overreaction Sunday night Monday. That would be like whoa. At least when you lost to the Cardinals this year, week one. I I think we all respected the Cardinals' talent, and Kyler, and it was just already clear like that was gonna. We even said going in, it's gonna be hard. And then Jimmy played shitty. Like, Jimmy should be able to play shitty, and you beat Detroit. You you just cannot lose the Lions. Well, I Because more than likely, they could be an 11-12 win team, and, like, they could drop some random game to, like, the Jags, Atlanta. Because, we like, we've always talked about. You can, be, you can be drafting in the top five and be a four-win team. Most of your four wins, like, just don't always come against other shitty teams. You you might have, like, a win against a 10-12 win team, right? The Jets f- picked second this year. They beat the Rams. Right. So, like, it wouldn't shock me if one of these bad teams beat the Niners. But that can happen as long as you, you start wiping out the good teams and you beat most of the shitty teams, right? Uh, 2019 for the Niners is a great example of what you're talking about, right? They were the one seed in the NFC because— they were eight zero to start the season. Like, they banked that's a bunch what, of early wins, yeah. right? And remember the discussion. Like Nash was like, "Ah, they haven't beaten anybody." It's like they're eight zero, so whatever. Like it doesn't matter. They're eight zero, and they were winning and, the games they should be winning. And what they do? They went five and three. They went thirteen and three, and they got the one seed. Exactly. Then they started playing Seattle, and it was like, and they were in the Rams and their division. It was like, okay, they they swept Arizona that year too. But um, yeah, so this year we don't look at the schedule and go eight zero, but you go. Let's start to you start two and zero. Yeah, you start, start two and zero. Can't be losing to Sirianni. You can't be losing to Sirianni. You can't be losing to Dan Campbell. You, but again, I and I said this earlier. Week one, would you want to start at home? Sure. I don't think it's it better than what they got week one. And I I hate saying it, but I'll say it again. They, Goff is. They've had a ton of success against him. They like to play Jared Goff. D'Amico Ryan's can go back to the file folder and just pull out the game plans, all of them. From the Rams games, it work. They work. It works against him. Well, he so. was on the staff in the meetings, like he knows, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, now he's in Salah's old office. Hopefully, yeah. Salah left some files behind. Yeah, I don't. Usually, you cut off their password. At least that's what they do to Eagles employees when they fire you. Uh, 